Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to today's webinar, What's New for VCL version 16.2, presented by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell. In today's webinar, he will dust off his Delphi skills and show you what's new in the DevExpress VCL subscription, including the new barcode control with over a dozen symbologies, the new token editor, and the new range control. This session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Julian. Well, thank you, Amanda, and uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me on this uh, auspicious day. It is the shortest day of the year, and I have a really long list of what's new, so I don't know how this is going to um, pan out in the end. So what's new in 16.2 for VCL? Now, reminder, uh, I'm talking about uh, VCL here, uh, so Delphi and C++ Builder in Rad Studio. New features for VCL. Our PDF viewer uh, in 16.1 was a community technology preview, a CTP. In other words, we were saying, uh, eh, it's there, but it's not quite done yet. There's some things that might be changing. Don't use it in production environment. Anyway, it's now fully released. We have some extra features going along with the PDF viewer, so stay tuned and I'll demonstrate them in a moment. There's a new barcode control, as Amanda mentioned, or as the, uh, the description of the webinar stated, we have a new barcode, barcode control. Uh, it has uh, over a dozen symbologies, including the usual one to know and use or have seen a lot of uh, barcode control. Uh, at the moment, it's just generating and displaying one. Uh, this is not to do with scanning barcodes or anything like that yet. I said yet. Did I say yet? Yeah, maybe. Uh, new token editor. Tokens, they're, they're kind of weird. Um, when I first saw these, um, you get the idea immediately once you visually see it, but a token editor, uh, to me, um, was kind of hard to describe. I'm going to see whether I can do it uh, when I demonstrate it inside our mail client. Range control editor. We've had the range control in, I think it came in in 16.1. What we've done with the range control now is to have, um, if you like, some known clients for the range control. The range control is fairly simple. I mean, it just helps you define a range over uh, some type or other. Um, now we've kind of bounded into various other controls so that um, they're, if you like, known clients or bound clients. Uh, grid, uh, merged column grouping, that's, that's kind of fascinating one for me. Um, I didn't even know the team were working on it. In fact, they beat the WinForms team to the punch on this one. Uh, WinForms does not have it in their grid, but we have it in Express Quantum Grid. Uh, we'll see that in a moment too. Uh, selectable filter operators, etc., etc., etc. So grid, lots of new features there, um, which kind of goes with the fact that it's the best grid for VCL out there. Spreadsheet, uh, we're doing a lot more with our report designing within the spreadsheet. Uh, we don't have a reporting tool for VCL. Uh, we expect people are using, um, I can't even remember what it's called now, um, my, my mind's gone blank, um, but the one that comes with Delphi or that, um, that has a, um, a simple one that comes with Delphi. And rich edit, aha, after all these, I'm going to say years, but it probably is years of me saying, warning, 64-bit C++ builder doesn't work. Uh, well, we've now made it work uh, with some 64-bit C++ builder. So if you're a C++ builder fan and you've been waiting for a 64-bit uh, rich edit, uh, you need to wait no more, but make sure you're upgraded kind of thing. Pivot Grid has better OLAP mode. Uh, what that really means, I'm not going to show this one off, is you can obtain drill down data uh, for any cell which is displayed when connected to an OLAP cube using the ADO um, provider, essentially. 
uh, the, the scheduler or scheduler uh, now has an agenda view. The agenda view is all about displaying the appointments for a day. So, let me just advance here. There's a gentle reminder now about what versions we are talking about. DevExpress VCL version 16.2 is for RAD Studio 2010 or later only. So if you have anything earlier than 2010, and a reminder, 2010 came out nearly seven years ago. Um, just pointing that out because I'd like to be really obvious about things. So um, 2010 or later only. Now, Rich Edit, in fact, has further restrictions. It's got to be XE or XE or greater. So XE all the way up to XE8 or Red Studio Seattle or um, uh, Berlin. Now, if you're using 64-bit C++ build, this is what I was talking about just now, then you have to have XE8 or above. XE8 or above. Now, my recommendation here is just upgrade. Embarcadero are doing these very um, aggressive marketing things at the moment. I think you have one more day to upgrade to Rad Studio Berlin 10.1.2, so today is the last day, um, at some ridiculous um, discount. Um, my recommendation is just do it. Um, Rad Studio Berlin is is fabulous, basically. It, it works really, really well. Um, and the other thing, so as I say, I do, um, Embarcadero on a very, very aggressive update cycle as well. They are updating um, Rad Studio with a whole bunch of new features. You may have heard of the, um, um, the latest one, which is coming out soon. I haven't got the uh, timetable with me, and uh, that's Delphi for Linux. Um, yes, uh, sorry. Um, Delphi for Linux is coming out there, updating Rad Studio. I mean, all across the board, um, not necessarily just Rad Studio itself, but the compilers and also the runtimes and so on and so forth. So, my recommendation is to use Studio Berlin. Um, just just do it, as it were. Anyway, FireMonkey, yeah, <laughs> the usual slide. Right, there is no FireMonkey support in this release. Now we had, um, I think it was a couple of months ago, we had uh, a survey. We sent out an email to our active customers and basically we said, um, what would you like us to do with regard to Rad Studio? And Obviously, there are a lot of people saying, well, we need um, you know, more uh, controls in VCL. But there's also a lot of people who said, basically, you know, I really want to use FireMonkey, but I'm not using it without DevExpress. What are you going to do about FireMonkey? If you were doing FireMonkey, these are the things I'd really, 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 really like you to do. And all I can say at the moment is we've, we've collated all this information. Yes, there are a lot of people out there, uh, a large proportion of our customers, who would like FireMonkey controls. And basically, they are talking more about mobile FireMonkey, not necessarily FireMonkey for OS X, for example, or for Windows. Um, so we're at the end of a development cycle now. We've just released version 16.2. It came out. We published it yesterday morning, yes, we are Wednesday, yesterday morning. So we're at that cusp of the team basically heaving a huge sigh of relief and thinking about what's going to happen for 17.1. I can't say yet. We're basically going to lock ourselves in a room with the team and uh, discuss how, what, when, we're going to do uh, with regard to VCL, with regard to uh, FireMonkey. Uh, not promising anything here, so I'd just like you to stay tuned for um, some uh, talk about this from us, uh, from me probably. And um, but for now, 16.2 is about VCL only. So let me just reinforce that particular point. So stay tuned now. Let's see some 16.2 in action. 
So what I've done here is, um, let me just uh, kill that for a moment. I've got a, a little VM here, which is what I actually use for um, my work in Rav Studio 10.1 in Berlin. Um, so I just um, I prefer using um, a VM for this. Um, it's just the way I work and all the rest of it. So first of all, first up on my list is this this mysterious token editor that I was talking about. Now you've probably seen this in Outlook, um, and we've basically replicated that kind of feel uh, within. Um, um, our mail client here. So let me, I'm going to create a new mail at the moment. So I need to send it to uh, some people. Um, so I start typing and we have this nice little filter drop down list here. And uh, oh yeah, Anthony, I want to really send this email to Anthony. What I've done now is I clicked on that and we have this token now that represents Anthony. I'm not displaying his email address or anything like that. It's a token. It has a nice little icon for the head. Um, I can hover over it, as you see, and I get to see what the email address is. Um, but there's also this little um, close icon as well. So let me let me add a couple more people. Um, Anita, she's good for this, and maybe um, we've we've already tried J. We don't want to do that again. Let's try S. Uh, Almas. So here I'm going. Oh yeah, I don't want Anthony at all now. If this were a comma-separated list, uh, I'd have to, you know, move the cursor over there and, you know, highlight that bit and delete it and, you know, whatever it happens to be. Here, I just press the little close icon, and that particular token goes away. So the token is some kind of short description and then some ancillary data that goes along with it. So here we have an example of the of a name and an email address and. Um, um, a little icon for whether it's male or female. And you as a programmer have to basically code up not a, a nice list, um, you know, one item above the other, but a comma-separated list uh, in some sense. We, we're not using commas here, but um, Outlook uses commas. And you could display the, the description and so on and so forth, but it makes it hard to... Uh, for your users to scan the the list, um, so by using these tokens, each item in the list is a token, and the token shows the description, and there's a name in this case, uh, with a couple of extra bits, uh, makes it nice and easy to understand what is going on with this list, and you can remove items from the list and then you know, presumably add other items and so on and so forth. That's a token editor. Easy to see, easy to understand when you see, but hard, kind of hard to actually um, um, talk about. So let me just uh, close that. I don't want to save any uh, changes to that one. Now I'm going to take a look at the scheduler control, the scheduler, uh, as we say in England. and. Um, the main thing, <clears throat> it's been around for a while, but in 16.2, we've added this agenda view, which is a way of viewing appointments by day in a long list. So we, here we have a bunch of appointments, and here we have a separate day. Notice as I scroll down, the day sticks on the header there. So it's, it's a very nice simple way of looking at a bunch of appointments, <clears throat> excuse me, day by day. We're also over here, we've linked it up to the actual um, um, calendar, and as I scroll down, you can see the highlighted day moving along as I move up and down this agenda view. Simple description, very nice idea, very nice UI experience uh, for your users. Uh, compared with, say, a, a day view and so on and so forth. The other thing I want to show you while we're here is the range control when it's linked to, in this case, a scheduler showing a, um, a day view. So we have a day view, a uh, bunch of resources there, TV channels, and I am going to basically buy a bottle of champagne to the guy in the team who came up with Fox Footy as the name of this channel. 
dude, I owe you one. That made me laugh when I first saw this. But anyway, the range control. Here it is, range control. <clears throat> so typical thing, you can drag um, the end of the range or you can drag the beginning of the range. And what happens down here is the range control has been automatically linked to the scheduler control. And so we're showing the items, the appointments in that range for each of the resources. And there's no other work for you to do. I mean, there's you know, this is code zero, basically. Um, so the range control um, has been added to um, I think it's four other controls. One is the scheduler, and it's the ability to select a range like this and be able to update an associated control, a linked control, automatically. And yes, okay. So that was the uh, range control inside the scheduler. Uh, just Kill that for the moment. Let's have a look at the grid next. And for the grid, there's been several new things. It's, uh, as I said, um, having written a grid, yes, I wrote a grid way, way back when. Um, this is the best VCO grid out there. And it's got a lot better. Merge groups is the first one. This is fabulous. Normally, when, you, when you're talking about groups, um, you do something like this. You have you know, payment type, and then you have company within payment type, and I said, okay, and then trademark within company. And it, you're getting this kind of tree effect, which sometimes you need, and then sometimes you're thinking, well, no, it's not really you know, that great. So what we've done is allow you to merge groups. So we form a kind of super group, if you like. So let me merge trademark into company. I basically press down the control key before I start moving the group. And now, as you see, there's a little plus sign that appears uh, next to the company there. And I can drop it. And now company and trademark are now this kind of super group. They're merged together. So we have company, Alessandro, trademark, trade, and so on, so on. So the there is more detail shown in the grid compared with before, but the amount of information is still the same using these, these groups. I could actually go even further. Let's drag this merged group inside this other group. And now we've got this kind of super group of payment type, company, and trademark all in one line. And we get a lot more data shown. Uh, and after all, it's the, it's the data you want to see rather than um, necessarily the, the grouping. So. Filter row, so that's merged groups. Um, yeah, WinForms doesn't have this yet. Yes, filter row. Filter row is this, this wonderful item here um, just underneath the column headers. And this allows your end user to filter the data that he's looking at. Um, at the moment, we only have one filter here. Oh, we have a couple of filters here. So. As you can see, not equal Toyota and less than $30,000. Um, oh, and you have to have four cylinders and more than two doors. But it's simple. So if I just want to look at the Toyota themselves, I can just press, click on the icon, press. Where am I? Click on the icon, uh, click on equals, and that's the, the thing is... Um, uh, shown for me. So if I wanted just Hondas, for example, I can just type in Honda into the filter row. But it's about the selectable operators. So here is a, um, uh, a set of uh, operators here. Uh, we drop down this nice list. You can have like, not like, contains as well. We notice that, you know, it's a text field. So, you know, you can have contains, whether it's a numeric field, um, say, over here. Uh, oh, I haven't got any. Oh, here we go. There we are. Um, then you can have equals, not equals, or less than, greater than, that kind of thing. So there's a, um, there's a much um, easier uh, way of filtering your data as your, as your, as your user than... Um, than before, essentially. Here we're showing the, the, the resulting filter down at the bottom. So you could, um, if you wanted to, <laughs> yikes, 
um, uh, where are we? Customize it there. There we are. So here's our filter builder. So using the filter selectors here, we basically created this filter as a kind of list of tree uh, uh, nodes here. So filter row uh, has been there before, but the new thing is the selectable uh, filter operators. Next weird one. This is this is kind of weird. If you've got a, a card view, uh, as we hear, layout view, um, sometimes your bits and pieces are too big to fit inside their area. So what we've done is we've added the ability to have scroll bars on each individual card within the card, the overall card for the for the item. So no longer do you have to worry about, if you like, how big things. Are and you know, what size of screen the user has, um, there, is, there is now this ability to scroll the, the data from side to side. So this particular card here, uh, or this card here, and so on and so forth. You can play around by changing you know, the width of the cards so you can see more um, by default, if you like. Um, without scrolling and so on and so forth. So then you, you're, as you're designing your application, you're basically going to design it so that the majority of the important information is shown on the, quote, left-hand side of the group, and the, on the right-hand side of the group, um, you know, the user has to basically scroll for it, so it has to be less important information, that kind of thing. Here's a, here's a great one that I, I particularly like. Um, data summary, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not showing this particular bit, but the, the interesting thing here is, okay, I have a grid, it's showing some data, I've got some grouping going on, I'm actually going to um, add uh, another group here, just for, just for fun. So I've got a bunch of groups now with some data in each, and I've got some sum going on, and you know, other um, aggregates uh, being calculated. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this to Excel. The interesting thing that happens here now is we've got um, not only the data being uh, exported to Excel, but it's also the data formatting going to be exported to the, um, the spreadsheet. So let me show you. I'm going to export the whole thing, the whole grid. Um, to Excel, give me a name, okay, as you see I've already been playing with this, okay. I'm not going to open it here because I'm inside my VM, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that, um, that particular file over to my main machine, here it is, I'm going to drag it over here as you can see, it's already been there, I'm going to replace that file. And now I'm going to open it in Excel, so I'm on my main machine now. <clears throat> and there we go. I had two groupings, payment type and product, as you can see. And we have all the data inside this spreadsheet. And, um, and there we go, yes. The, the formatting is the same, uh, we're showing the same data, we're showing the same totals, and so on and so forth. Um, very nice um, idea um, so that you can continue working inside um, Excel or, um, or maybe if you want to, you can know, open it up inside your um, spreadsheet control, which is another application or something like that. So export to Excel now has data formatting. And now let me show you um, the, the new control that we have, the bar control, barcode control. Um, the barcode control, um, pretty simple. It allows you to generate Barcodes, yeah, fine. It's uh, um, you know it's got all the usual ones. QR code as a uh, um, the ones you see on you know packaging and all that kind of stuff to take you to a particular website. 
uh, EAN and Q, uh, UPC and so on and so forth. When I saw EAN 13, I just basically had to type this very, very special um, barcode into it or number into it. 5562237360. Oh, I'm not there. Sorry. Start again. We'll get there. Sorry, it's using my mouse is in the wrong place. So 978 155. Six two two seven three six, and as everybody knows, that was the um, that was the ISBN number for my now way out of date book. Yeah, Tomes of Delphi uh, data structured algorithms had this ISBN number, and I checked. This barcode looks like the one on the back of the book. It's impressive. Anyway, so barcodes, if you need them, great. If you don't, yeah, you might need them in the future, especially QR code. QR codes pop up everywhere. So this is devexpress.com. If you have your mobile phone and you know, scan that, you'll get to devexpress.com. On to uh, the next good one. Uh, oh, let me close that one. It's the PDF viewer. As I said, PDF viewer. Uh, last released as a CTP in 16.1, it's now a full-blown product with some further essential features. Um, so here we are, let me make, make, maximize this. Um, we have page navigation here, so we can jump page to page. Uh, we can rotate the, uh, the pages if you have a PDF, which is kind of been scanned wrongly or something like that, so we're now viewing it um, counterclockwise, so we now view it straight on again. Uh, we have paging at the bottom here and so on. Uh, the ability to zoom in and out, uh, slowly but surely. Um, what else is there? Um, can select text now. Uh, you can also select images. Uh, the hand tool is there as well. Uh, that's new, and you, whoops, you can basically grab your page as you are reading it and move it up and down. You don't have to try and find the scroll bar. You can just uh, move it up and down. The detail reports. So here we have a master detail um, design, if you like. And again, this is just a spreadsheet bunch of cells with some data in them, and that's it. And we're just defining certain bits as being a header and a detail and so on. So here we have, this is, makes it easier to see, we have a bunch of suppliers, and that's what this main report is about, is a bunch of suppliers. Each supplier supplies some products, and lo and behold, there are a bunch of orders that they have for those products. So we have basically a master detail detail report, or, you know, it's two master details on the way down. So now we've basically what we've done with 16.2 is allow you to define other levels of detail within your report, so not just the detail part of the report, but also um, here we have this master um, a detail section and then this master detail section. So these are the products and these are the orders within the products. And again, you hit report preview and it's going to generate another spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet gets even better. For each supplier, we have a different worksheet within that spreadsheet for that supplier. So these are like your pages, if you like, in your report. So here we are, um, Exotic Liquids um, does chai, chang, and aniseed syrup. I don't even want to know what that is. And here are the orders they've had for that particular um, particular product. And if I want to go over to here, I can see you know, a similar report as a worksheet of that particular supplier, um, this Spanish supplier. And the user is still within the spreadsheet environment. Yeah, again, they can print it. They can print the worksheets. They can do whatever they want. So that's a master detail added to the spreadsheet. Um, 
A late addition, uh, which didn't actually appear in this um, this particular uh, demo, so let me just jump out and um, start another demo, um, is um, the ability to um, use the filter control or a filter option uh, within the um, uh, within the report. So here, um, this is the same data essentially. So if I run the report, I'll get roughly the same uh, information. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, let's add a condition to this and um, let's make sure the country is equals. I think. Um, Let's see what we've got in England, just because. So let's apply it. So we're using this particular filter now, country equals England. And when I run the report now, uh, pressing F5, all I'm going to get is uh, nothing. OK, let's not do England. Uh, I think Canada worked. I can't remember what data is there. Let's apply that and run the report again. Oh, here we are. So another spreadsheet gets generated and there are two items on the sheet for both um, companies in Canada and with some data and you know the same master detail so again um, it's about using your spreadsheet in a maybe a non-conventional way but still that familiar environment but now uh, not only do you have your field chooser we have your filtering options so you can just filter what uh, reports get uh, generated from your design from your data and that is um, all I particularly wanted to uh, to show you today um, so let me, oh, I went through here. While I'm on this particular slide, I actually, if you notice, we have a special guest star on the line. As it says here, special guest star. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to talk a little bit more about Rad Studio Berlin 10.1.2. And to do that, I would like my friend, old friend, I've known him for a very long time now, uh, Nick Hodges from... Embarcadero, who's the Director of Product Management. Nick, are you there? I am here, Julian. It's great to hear your voice it's again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome to DevExpress webinars. I'm very, uh, very pleased to be here. <laughs> good, good. So what can you tell us about Rad Studio Berlin, and why is my recommendation the right one? Well, Rad Studio Berlin uh, brings you up to date with everything that's going on in Windows 10. Uh, plus, it uh, is an improved quality, of course, and keeps you updated on all the database access. And, of course, you can use it with DevExpress, which is one of the best things you can do with it as well. <laughs> Why, thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I've got down here aggressive update cycle. What what kind of things are you expecting to show us or that you've announced for uh, 2017? And after all, here we are, nearly the new year. As I told everybody, it's the shortest day of the year now, so days are getting longer. <laughs> yes, they are, and uh, we uh, we like to think we're constantly improving the product. Um, <clears throat> we do have an aggressive update cycle in that. We uh, continually are trying to do uh, and provide improvements for our update subscription customers. The big thing coming in 2017 is Linux support on the server side. Um, we've gotten a lot of good feedback from our customers that Linux server support would be really, really uh, welcome. And so we are providing that in our what we're codenamed Godzilla release coming <laughs> in uh, 2017. Um, don't associate that with any particular city, I wouldn't think. <laughs> At this oh, point, oh come on, come things on. could change. You never know. That's true. That's true. <laughs> one one other product which I'm I'm, if you like, enamored with, which I think is a, a brilliant idea, is Rad Server. Oh, uh, delighted to talk about Rad Server. Go ahead. I mean, I think this is one thing that uh, we should be looking at in the future for our um, 
our VCL customers, and as I mentioned earlier, maybe our FireMonkey customers, if we um, go that route, is Absolutely. RAD Server. So what, what is RAD Server? How does it help? Um, um, RAD Server customers? is a uh, REST ser uh, microservices server that enables you to very easily build REST microservices for your code. Um, it's also a relatively easy migration path away from client server to a multi-tier environment. Um, using REST as the REST and HTTP as the transport layer. Right. Um, it's, a, it's very standards compliant, which means that you can build any kind of front end, but of course we provide excellent services, REST client services for front ends if you want to build one in uh, right. Delphi or C++ Builder. But uh, if you want to build an Angular or a, a, a PHP or whatever kind of service <laughs> you want to build, well, you know, hey, you know, some people do. I know. I know. Whatever you want to do with your front end, we can support that. But the real key is it enables you to pretty straightforwardly move your existing client-server application to be more uh, uh, front-end neutral, as it were. Right. Uh, and uh, have thin client front ends. And we're very excited about it. It's a great tool. It's easy to use. Um, it's amazingly easy to produce REST services with it, and we're pretty excited about it. So the services you create with it are written in Delphi, C++ Builder, and so on and so forth because it's on the server. You can, you can write That's correct. the code. That's right. correct. Um, you can extend your uh, REST services to provide any type of app, uh, REST Client that or REST server service that you wish, yeah. including uh, you know importing your data modules and quickly turning those into uh, JSON objects and all that good kind of stuff. Cool, brilliant. Well, thank you, Nick, for for being here and for You're supporting very welcome. us. And um, well, thank you for supporting us. It's beautiful <laughs> stuff. It's absolutely beautiful. We wish you luck in the future. Um, and in fact, we've. Uh, I've come to the end of my particular slot here, uh, so thank you to everybody else as well, and I'm just going to call on Amanda now. Hello, Amanda. Are you still there? <laughs> hey, Julian. I am. <laughs> yes. So what have we got question-wise? Anything interesting? I see Mike wants to see the merged column grouping feature. Yes. Um, let, me just, let me just quickly show that one. Uh, let's jump back over here and uh, start up the, uh, come on, wake up, there we go, um, the merged grouping, here we are. So what I've got here is uh, we're already merged, so let me unmerge it, whoops, let's pop it out. So this is what we used to, um, Mike, um, essentially we have a group of payment types and within that a uh, group for companies and then a group for trademarks. And as you see from here, there's an awful lot of gray space here, which is not really detail that we want to see. It's more about the grouping. So what we've allowed you to do is to take this item and then add it, merge it into a kind of super group. Um, so you see the little plus sign next to the company there. And suddenly we have company and trademark as a group. So company trademark as a group. And I can continue doing that. Let's merge it all into. So we essentially now have just one super group per group of items. And then we see a lot more um, data uh, within those groups. So that's merged groups. That's essentially it. Uh, basically, by pressing the control key as you're merging things um, around. So I can unmerge everything and then maybe just have an ordinary grouping. So group within a group here. So that's merged groups. Let me uh, quickly jump back to my to no, whatever. <laughs> and anything else? What's what else? Uh, we have, let's see, um, oh, uh, Philip's asking about OLAP, is there any, could you demonstrate? Um, actually, I don't, I could, but I don't know, I haven't actually tried it out, so I'm not really sure what's going to be shown at this particular point. Um, let me, uh, let's have a laugh. 
let me do completely unscripted <laughs> off the the main track here. It's talking about um, da, 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 oh, lap drill down. Ah, but there we go. <laughs> I don't have ADO um, OLAP installed, so I can't show you, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm sorry. Try this. Sorry, Philip. <laughs> nah, no, I haven't I haven't got anything set up, so sorry, Philip. Uh, let's see. So, uh, somebody's asking about SVG icons. SVG icons, not there yet in our VCL subscription. Um, we started adding them to our WinForms um, product, and um, there's an awful lot of work. Essentially, what we have to do with SVG icons is, A, write the support for SVG uh, to display SVG. SVG is Scalar Vector Graphics. So it's a way of uh, creating an image which scales according to your resolution and so, so on and so forth without that jaggedness that um, occurs. But to do that, we have to change every single icon we display it, instead of being a bitmap to being a vector um, graphic. And that's an awful lot of work. And um, yeah, the WinForms team has started doing it for WinForms, uh, but it's, it's going to take a long time. And, um, obviously the DCL team, we're still evaluating that particular um, technology. Um, from Daryl, how do the grid column filters handle null values? I don't know. I'd love to ask the team. Don't know. Okay. So they'll have to answer that particular question. Uh, <laughs> see, Richard says, whoever does your included icon sets also deserves champagne. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be buying champagne. I might as well go to France and buy a truckload. <laughs> <laughs> Anything okay. else? Um. Uh, blah, blah, blah. No, not really. No. All right. Okay. Well. So I'm just going to see if the team will pop in here on a couple of, if they don't, if they don't get to them, we do save the questions and uh, right. indeed. you can answer some of these in a blog post following. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um, anything new on the map control, Julian, from Philip? Uh, no, not this time. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Julian, and also Nick, <laughs> for popping in there at the end. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Perfect. indeed. Thank you, Nick. And um, thank you, Amanda. And thank you, everybody. All right, everybody, like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be available later on our Dev Express YouTube channel. Um, and as it is our last webinar of the year, I, I would like to say on behalf of everyone here at Dev Express, happy holidays. We sincerely appreciate all of you. And that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Julian. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing Dev Express. Bye-bye.